Okay, but tell me about this buck. This is, it's not your first buck. No, it's my first one with a muzzle loader. I've shot three others, but this is the first one I've ever shot with a muzzle loader. Gary Romancic from St. John's took this buck during the 1986 firearm deer season with his muzzle loader. A friend of his, Don Cooper, got him interested. Well, he just called up one morning, wanted to know uh, what it's like getting in muzzle loading, and, and uh, well, I told him a lot of fun, and and uh, so he wanted to know what kind of gun to get. And I said, well, he's CVA. Uh, because muzzle loading is more complex than most firearms, it's a good idea to find an experienced shooter to help you get started. And uh, so he went out and bought a 50 caliber, and uh, he's got his deer with it. That first year he's ever hunted with a muzzle loader. Well, when did you start this, Gary? When did you call him up? Oh, roughly about three months ago. And I got to shooting out here where we're at, and I just, I enjoy hunting with it. I enjoy shooting it. What is it about shooting a muzzle loader that turns your crank? A lot of smoke out of the end of the barrel. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, sir. A lot of smoke. In slow motion, you can see it. Lots of smoke, all right, because of the black powder that's used in these colonial guns. Of the two types of muzzle loaders, Gary shoots the more modern percussion cap. At the start of the day, he puts caps on the nipples of his double barrel in order to dry out the chamber where the powder will be sitting. Oftentimes, condensation will form inside the barrels from moving indoors to outdoors, and this little move... That dries out the bottoms of the barrels. To load a muzzle loader, everything goes part by part, down through the muzzle. Homemade measuring horns from deer antlers measure the exact amount of powder Gary wants to shoot. This powder is the same black powder used during the 1800s. It's highly combustible, and muzzle loaders know the care that must be given to open gunpowder like this. Once the charge is down the barrel, a ball and a patch is loaded. Lead balls are used, round balls by the traditional shooters, and it's set on a greased patch on the muzzle. There's about a ten thousandths of an inch tolerance between the ball and the barrel, and a ball starter is used to seat the ball firmly and get it going the right direction. When it's down the barrel, oh, about six inches, the shooter grabs the ramrod and firmly drives the patch and the ball down to the powder. Not too tight against the powder, just snug. A double barrel muzzle loader like Gary's is quite heavy, but they're becoming more popular because you can take two shots in a row without reloading, an advantage that compensates for the extra weight. Practice is necessary with these front stuffers. You not only need to practice shooting and setting your sights, but you need to practice loading because in the field, when you have to reload, the conditions might not be ideal. Now the caps go into place. This is a shortcut from the more primitive flintlock rifles but these caps almost guarantee 100% success of firing each time. You'll notice in a percussion rifle that it fires, like most rifles, a quick recoil and an amazingly accurate shot. That's the percussion rifle. The more primitive muzzle loader is the flintlock, a predecessor to the more modern percussion cap method of firing. A flintlock holds a piece of flint in the hammer which strikes against a steel frizzen to make the sparks that set off the powder. It takes a slow motion look to really see the sparks. This is the beginning of the chain reaction that Don Cooper will set off with his flint lock. There's a hole that connects the sparks to the powder in the barrel, which must be cleaned before every shot. To make sure the powder in the barrel will go off, some highly volatile, very fine 4F powder is placed in the pan right outside the pinhole. It happens quickly, but there's a big poof, a big flame called a flash in the pan, which happens a split second after the flint strikes the steel frizzen. At this point, the gun isn't going off, but Don shuts his eyes because of the flash. Not the best habit for accuracy, though, or safety. Now let's shoulder a fully loaded flintlock and watch the sequence of sparks and flashes. There's a spark when the hammer falls, but at the same time, Don is anticipating by closing his eyes. Let's hope he's holding it steady. The 
chain reaction complete with smoke and fire, it makes shooting interesting to a lot of people. It's, it's not like today's modern guns, you know, where you just stuff, you know, a bunch of cartridges into it and shoot away. You know, you've got to, you take a little more time on each shot and uh, you don't, you, you know, you've got to reload after every shot. So you just, you take a little more time. Doesn't that slow you down, though? Doesn't it frustrate you a little bit that it takes so much time? No, not at all. Not at all. Muzzle loading doesn't frustrate Gary. He's seen enough frustration in the past eight years since a motorcycle accident left him without his left arm or left leg. Determined to overcome the barriers that would keep him indoors, Gary's worked hard in rehabilitation and in shooting. So now he adds muzzle loading to his list of enjoyments in the great outdoors. Thank you.